Today we're taking a look at the Jane Davenport watercolor set and this is their bright set and a little while ago we looked at the Jane Davenport mermaid markers which I actually really liked and you can check that out by clicking the card right here it includes a fun tutorial but I was at Michael's today and they had a 40% off coupon going on and normally this little watercolor set costs about $31 and you can double check that on the Michael's site I'll include a link below but because I had a 40% off coupon I saved $12.80 and this was really intriguing to me because a I see a lot of people using it on Instagram so of course you know monkey see monkey do but also because it is incredibly similar to the watercolor confection sets by Prima Marketing which appeal to the exact same crowd and costs less than half of what these Jane Davenport watercolors are. Now, costs, blah. So you can get these on the Michaels website or you can get them in person at Michaels and it took forever for them to come in at my Michaels, but then again, it also took forever for them to, for the mermaid markers to come in. Um, so rather than wait for them, I uh, scooped them up. So this is put out by American Crafts, which in my opinion is hit or miss, and it is made in Korea. And they have how-tos at janedavenport.com, which um, as a watercolorist, I might have to check out. So something really interesting about the whole Jane Davenport line is they sell a lot of products to help you fake the look of watercolor with more effort than it would take to actually watercolor. So um, I'll include some links for you guys to check that out and I will probably have some examples in my blog post but I wasn't gonna waste my money on fake watercolor because I am an actual watercolor artist. So we have these totally not named weird woman's faces on the back. Don't know if you guys can see that. And that's like her whole shtick. She sells like stencils so you can make these weird faces by just stamping them. You never need to learn how to draw. Isn't that great? We live in a time where you don't ever have to learn how to draw. You can just spend just as much time getting your hands all inky. So I'm gonna go ahead and unbox it from its happy little box. And we get 12 colors, same as the Prima Marketing. And there's a sneaky little bit of tape right there to help hold it in place, keep people from investigating it in Michaels. And unlike the Prima Watercolors, this makes no promises to the professionality of this product, which is nice, but when you're paying $30 for a little cutesy twee set like this, you might as well buy actual artist watercolors. So the warning says this product contains chemicals known to the state of California to cause cancer. Well, I mean, that's cadmium probably, um, and that's common in artist grade watercolors. Uh, birth defects or other reproductive harm. Do not mouth. What is mouth? Is mouth like sucking on a hard candy? Are you gonna, are you as a grown adult with your own studio space that you can lock your kids out of? Are you gonna pop one of these in your mouth? I mean, Sure, okay. Um, no, I know they need, they're need. they legally required to put that, but I've never heard anyone, I've always, it's always do not ingest. Not, do not mouth or chew like you're a dog or something. And for those of you who don't appreciate snark, I apologize, I have a feeling this video is gonna be really full of, of snark considering they wanted $30 for, you know, a teal tin, yet I paid the price. Okay, so we have a container that looks pretty much identical, save for color, as the cute little Prima tin. It is probably the same tin. They're probably getting it from the same supplier, except this one has someone else's name screened on the front. There you go. Isn't that what you always wanted? Somebody else's name. Didn't you always want to be a walking billboard for someone else? I mean, I do, but I review watercolor supplies, so, you know, I'll take what I can get. But for the rest of you, don't you just want to shill for her? Inside, it looks, again, pretty much just like, I'm just gonna leave the Prima set out. It looks just like the Prima set. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yes. Oh, and then there's an explanation. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Okay, so, so this is pretty much, she, wh whoever decided to do this, pretty much, 
copied the Prima set, except made it worse. So you've got, oh boy, we've got some wonderful color names. I can't wait to read them to you guys. Um, so with the Prima set, while this isn't watercolor paper, it's like sketchbook paper. It's about cardstock weight. The stuff that comes with the Jane uh, Davenport set is glossy paper. Are you kidding me? You're never going to get an accurate reflection of color on paper like this. <sighs> Love it. So I'm going to read this to you guys and I'll try to keep the snark out of my voice. Hello, artist. This palette of fine watercolors features three primaries so you can mix any color and some of my favorite hues. Use the reverse of this card to make a handy reference. I hope this fine little set of watercolors brings you big joy. Join me at janedavenport.com for painting tips, techniques, and art making lessons. Heart, Jane Davenport. And then we've got Jane Davenport, the Color Institute. Gee, I wonder if she has an MFA to teach at the Color Institute. Bright palette includes three primers and a specially selected set of colors. And then, of course, hey y'all, you should totally post our stuff to Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And um, yes, and then we have paint till we faint. Oh, how cute. Jane Davenport, test your paint below. I'm gonna do a comparative swatch where you guys can see the difference between the two. So our wonderful selection of colors in this, still very cute. It was super cute when Prima did it. This very cute removable tray. My Prima one gets kind of stuck sometimes. Let's see if we can get this out. Yep, same tray, made in China. These are made in Korea. This has no such branding on it. But yeah, pretty much, pretty much the same. Not the same colors, but like the same setup. And um, for those of you who enjoy my alcohol marker reviews, you know that I get really tired of these like duplicate competitor products. Like everything's exactly the same. Y'all just go buy real watercolors. And I, I say this, but I should just, I mean, I own real watercolors. Um, but yes, so we have a bunch of these twee little things to unpackage. Gee, they almost look like candy. I really want to mouth them. So we have Buzzy Ladybug Butterfly 70s Eyeshadow. Wow, that's a great name. Mermaid Jiminy Best Friend Fairy Tale Frida Mystic Royal and Ink. Please, y'all, actually learn how to draw faces. Like, it's her style is fine. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna dump on her artist to artist. But like, it's not, it's it's hard, but it's so much more worthwhile than just paying thirty dollars for a really ugly stamp, so you can stamp your stuff with somebody else's style. And there's so many artists, so many artists who are willing to teach you, who are willing to show you this. This blows my mind. So Jane Davenport, and I know a lot of the people it appeals to, because um, my mom's the same way, like they would like to be able to do this stuff, but they're really, really scared. It's a risk to them. And, and I get it, but like anything worth having, anything worth doing is worth overcoming the fear and worth taking the risk. So please let me, an artist, an artist with an MFA, an artist with hundreds of comic pages under her belt, an artist who puts herself out there every single day and fails pretty often, let me encourage you to be brave and take that risk and don't rely on someone else's stamps making money off of your desire to learn how to draw. All right, so I will un unwrap one on camera and I hate to write this stupid oh my gosh these are seriously the same thing let me see if I can find my yellow in the same color from the classics it's the same like rough textured it's the same paint it's probably from the same supplier why the heck are these twice as much because they've got Jane Davenport's name all over them who cares put Becca Hilburn's name on it and charge five dollars because it's what it's going to be worth so, um, yeah, I'm going to unbox these and I'll check in with you guys in a minute. So I have been thinking about these and it says it is, um, 
three primaries and a mix of specially selected colors. So here is the really interesting thing. Do we mean primaries in the grade school sense where it's um, yellow, usually a warm yellow, red, usually a cool red, and then blue, which is usually portrayed as like an ultramarine blue, so a warm blue. Do we mean primaries the way third graders mean primaries? Or do we mean primaries like RGB? Or do we mean primaries like CMYK? She doesn't actually specify. I guess that would require referring to these super tweely named paints by their actual you know, the names everybody's familiar with. I am so not a fan of naming paints after like makeup-y things or like candy things because, you know, people don't, artists have a hard time getting taken care, taken seriously anyway. And the more you try to make it seem like a fun toy, I mean, yes, that makes things more accessible, but it also demeans people who actually do do these things. So, um, you know, it's a fine line to walk. And I've noticed that craft companies have no problem whatsoever throwing artists under the bus. Like last year, the whole big thing was like every single craft blogger, it seemed like would always make it a point. You don't have to be an artist. And I went off on this huge spiel as an artist about how much I hate that. Um, so to see sort of the infantilization of art supplies, and not that these are like, you know, artist grade art supplies, but it, it seems to be a continuing trend and art supply companies continue to court crafters for their money, which is their decision. But all in all, it means that artists and crafters end up with weaker products and end up paying more for weaker products. Um, if you compare the art supply industry in the US to the UK, to Europe, to Japan, um, we are vastly behind in terms of quality um, and we're way overpaying compared to what a lot of those artists are paying. So it's just, you know, if you love art supplies, even if you don't consider yourself an artist, it is something to think about. You know, maybe expect these companies to not give all their products to wee baby names. Like, like Mystic and Royal and Frida, which is probably named after Frida Kahlo, and Fairy Tale and Best Friend. I'm sorry, that sounds like a nail polish name. You know, like not paint. Just, I hate to say it, but I prefer Prima's approach where they don't even name the colors. It's just a number because now I'm faced with the dilemma of do I want to write these kind of bogus names that are intended to sort of make it hard to replace the colors? It basically prevents people who bought this set and might want to learn how to watercolor. It prevents them from replacing it with similar colors. It makes it harder for them to do that. They have to take a couple extra steps in education, which is just, un un you know, it's not really right. If they spent that money and bought a Windsor & Newton set, they wouldn't have to spend that time. So everything has been unwrapped. Everything has its cute little packaging right next to it. Remember guys, do not mouth these. Do not gum these, okay? They could cause cancer if you put them in your mouth. Um, so the next step is to swatch and I'm gonna do it two ways. I'm gonna do it on actual real people watercolor paper, not even expensive stuff, um, probably a fluid pad. And then we're also gonna do it on her terrible paper. And we're gonna see how the two stack up. I know Dear Jane makes water brushes. I'm going to grab one because they're on sale at Michael's fairly often. Here's one. Here's a Jane. A JD, the Color Institute water brush. And no, it won't fit, but for 30 bucks, you would have thought she could have included one. So um, this set comes with no brushes. And usually I don't use the included brush. So usually it's not a big deal. But like I said, for 30 bucks for what you're getting, I would like to see. Oh yeah, I wanna put these back. So normally with these, I'll put a little bit of washi tape, double fold it under each to keep it in place. Oh, and I have to label them. I don't feel like lab labeling them with these really bad names. And after I swatch them, I'm gonna do a best guess as to what colors the, uh, these, what like artist grade colors these are replicating. Okay, so as with any watercolor set, regardless of quality, for best performance, you do wanna activate each color. You can do that by spritzing them if you so desire, or you can drip drop a couple of drops of water onto each pan and then wait a few seconds. Now with these super inexpensive watercolors, they end up getting really thick and gouache-like. 
And these watercolors tend these because the primas are very similar to this. And I just did a field test <clears throat> with the classics. Um, the they're very rough. They can kind of damage your brush. So you know that is something to definitely be aware of that they're not going to warn you. And another reason I go off on this kind of stuff is because uh, she refers to us as artists and in like a very familiar way multiple times. So, you know, when you uh, market something as being for artists and it's totally not, I'm going to come after you because I want to make sure people don't get taken advantage if I can help it. And watercolor is one of those arenas where um, people are really confused and there's a lot of crummy products masquerading as good products and they get taken advantage of. And since I have the knowledge and the experience, I want to protect people. So I'm going to go grab a slightly better light source so we can get some slightly better lighting and then we'll get swatching. All right, we're going to do one for one swatching. So we're going to go ahead and swatch Buzzy on watercolor paper. And then on her paper, and that seems like a cadmium yellow. Now we're gonna do ladybug. And that is a very blue red, almost a rose. And then we're gonna do butterfly, and that's kind of a phthalo blue. And then we're going to do 70s eyeshadow, which, you know, normal people would refer to it as cyan. And that is a very opaque cyan. And then we're going to do the blue green, which they refer to as mermaid over at the, the, the Color Institute. I wonder if I can like go and get like an additional degree from there. And then we've got Jiminy, which is a reference to the cricket. And it's a very opaque sap green or yellow green. And this would probably be Viridian. Now we're going to go to this super hot pink called Best Friend, which is... Mm, I wouldn't really call it a magenta. It's pretty much just a hot pink, maybe a compose rose. Then we've got fairy tale, which is sort of a quinacridone magenta. Oh, hey, I'm using like names that you guys could look up if you like these colors. Now we've got Frida, which is like a dark red. It's like a lipstick red, which I hate to call it that. Um, it's probably like a red violet. And then we've got Mystic, which is like probably a dioxin, no, kind of a mauve. It's a weird purple. Okay, then we've got Royal, well, that's gonna be the dioxin purple. And then we've got Ink, which is kind of a black, wait, oh no, it's Indigo. I was thinking it would be like um, either a sepia or a neuro black or carbon black, like a brownish black. Okay, so I'm going to let these dry and look, the card wants to kip up already and then drip, drip, dribble everywhere. So we're going to grab a piece of washi tape or two and just tape down the edges. But this is just for quick reference, right? Like it's not actually intended to be like a real reflection of the colors. It's just to remind you what colors look like. Tape that down and let that dry. So while this dries, I can't help but think that the bright set is an interesting, an interesting selection of colors. This is probably perfect if you pretty much work in bright primaries, you don't really do a lot of color mixing. Um, I'm really kind of surprised she didn't include a skin tone, uh, but we're gonna have to head on over to janedavenport.com, not even, you know, the Color Institute. We gotta head over to her site um, to, I guess, maybe figure out how to mix skin tones. I mean, I, I know how to mix skin tones and I've taught you guys how to mix skin tones, but uh, I'd like to see if Jane can maybe teach us something new. After all, she does work for the Color Institute. So, um, yeah, like there's no browns in here, 
there's no like actual human color so this is like probably great if you know i this will probably work if you only do florals. But if you're, say, a stamper who wants to do teddy bears, you might be SOL if you don't know how to mix colors. And a lot of these colors look like they're gonna mix to dirt. But you know, there's really only one way we can figure this out, and that is through a field test. But I'm not gonna do that in this video because I have another field test to record tonight. I will do it in another video. And I will probably continue to be really, really mean to poor Miss Jane. Um, I'm just such a cruel, cruel, cruel comic artist, aren't I? So I am waiting for these super thickly applied paints to dry. And that way I can do like my sign off. Colors do appear fairly, oh, you guys can't see that. Let me see if I can. I guess. Okay, so colors do appear differently on actual watercolor paper. Um, you might even be using, say, Ranger watercolor uh, cardstock, which isn't bad. Um, but the colors are much brighter on this coated thin paper than they are on actual watercolor paper. So that is definitely something to keep in mind. They're also um, a bit muddier, gummier on the watercolor paper. There's more sedimentation, but it's not necessarily sedimentation in a desirable way than they are here on the coated paper that she included. And I really wonder why she went in that direction, but I will do my research and I will find out and I'll either talk about it on the blog at natosuit.blogspot.com or in the field test video. So if you have this set and you want to learn how to use this, you actually want to learn how to mix colors and you don't just want to use stamps to make your faces, um, I hope you will look forward to that video and I hope it can help you. And there are loads of other videos here on my channel where I teach you how to mix skin tones, I teach you how to mix hair colors, I teach you how to apply blush in a way that doesn't look like a four-year-old caked it on top of their face. Um, I teach you all sorts of tricks that I know and have learned as a watercolor comic artist. And uh, you can, if you don't like video for that, because I prefer to read, um, you can head on over to natosoup.blogspot.com and check out my watercolor basic series. And that should help you out a lot as well. The full review will be there, um, as well as reviews for the Prima watercolor confection sets that I own. And... I'm just looking to make sure I didn't miss anything. It does seem like these colors are at least represented on the box. Although, wait, no. Okay, so that's that hot pink, that's that, that's the, it's that purple, that's that, that's that. Where does this come from? Wait. Oh, I see. Okay, it just looks nothing like the color. Awesome. And in fact, it doesn't look anything like the color on the back of the box either, which isn't the most surprising thing, but you know, always good to know. And uh, while this still dries, because it's really taken a while tonight, it must be pretty humid out there. I'm gonna go ahead and line them up, but I'll do the rest of that off camera. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, guys, so these have had a chance to dry. I'm gonna grab my camera real quick so I can document that before I start picking things up and lifting things so we can get these checked out in 3D. Move all this aside. Untape this. All right, so we've got a little bit of glycerin pooling here and here in here, which isn't surprising, some hard edge drying, and that could be the paper surface. It just, this isn't the sort of paper design to soak in. And then on the actual watercolor paper, again, we have some glycerin pooling on quote unquote mystic, but there's also some on royal and some on ink. So I hope you guys will tune in again for the field test and I hope you guys will check out some of my other watercolor swatch tests and reviews. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you again really soon. Bye guys!